Welcome back everyone to The Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and I have a super special guest, friend of the show, Kevin Mullins, is here to talk about Skia Sharp, this beautiful designer and everything awesome. How's it going, Kevin? Great. What about yourself, James? Doing lovely. It's a beautiful overcast day here in Seattle, Washington. But from my understanding, you are in beautiful, wonderful Texas. How's it going? Awesome. We've got beautiful weather today. I can't, I wish. The sun maybe, I see the, the sun coming through your super hip uh, apartment over there. And uh, I wish that we had any of it. Just one day, that's all I want is just one day of sunlight, so. But, um, yeah, so Kevin, you and I have worked uh, with each other for a long time at Xamarin. Now you're uh, over here at Microsoft. Can you tell uh, everyone at the Xamarin Show, what do you do here at Microsoft? I am a senior content developer. So what we do is help create the documentation. Mm -hmm. And we also create uh, reusable samples and recipes for our users to get a really great feel with the product and, and so, learn how to use it. So you would say like if anyone's ever downloaded a sample, open up some of the documentation, that's you, that's you and the team building this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Got it, that's awesome. Yeah, and it, to be honest, documentation is one of the most important things when developers get started. I mean, I started with the recipes six years ago and you just open something, like, whoa, when you can see it and run it, um, it's awesome. What's your background, Kevin? I mean, before joining Xamarin and the whole thing. Well, being in Houston, Texas, I worked in big oil. Can you imagine that? Naturally, <laughs> naturally. I was a contractor for years, and I have worked with Visual Studio for ages. Uh, when .NET came along, I got into that. I was originally a desktop developer, and then we moved to ASP. And as the web started to give way to mobile, uh, one of the guys that was working for me said, hey, have you seen this Xamarin thing? It allows you to use .NET and write a real cross-platform native tool. And got into that, and it just, the rest of its history. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's surprising, like, the first time you do it, too, and it works, and you're like, I can't believe it works, and, like, it's awesome, right? Yeah. One of the things that really shocked me was I was able to create or take this library that we created, very complex code, and I added it to the Apple project and it just ran. Like <laughs> you said, the first time it just compiled and worked. It's like, that's fantastic. It's like this so, magic feeling, you know what I mean? It's just like this, it's like pure magic and, and it makes you feel good inside as a developer, I think. Totally, totally. So uh, today we're talking about, I wanted to bring you on because we released um, this brand new designer for Skia Sharp. And I'm, one, I've never talked about Skia Sharp on the show. Um, um, never talked about this designer on the show. Uh, but I've had so many developers come up to me all the time and they're like, you can I just draw something on a canvas? And like, what about like SVG stuff? And what about like, I just want to draw stuff and I want it to work. And I, I, we, I saw this library of Skia Sharp that the team had worked on for a long time. And then this design, it was like blew my mind. And I saw you demo it, I think on one of the calls, I was like, this is amazing, I gotta have you on. So I, I imagine that I want you to kind of run with it because I pretend like I know nothing about Skia Sharp and our, and our, and our watchers and listeners know nothing about Skia Sharp. What is Skia Sharp? And then wh where do we go from there? Skia Sharp is a cross platform tool that allows you to create vector graphics in code and truly share across all the platforms, Windows, Windows UWP, WinForm, uh, Android, and all the iOS and Mac platforms. And what I love about it is it's no compromise. Mm -hmm. I've seen other attempts at this and they're really just an intersection. So they were too simple. You didn't have things like shadows or the gradients really didn't work. With Skia Sharp, you really don't have that. And where the designer came about, when Mac, I mean, when Apple released the tvOS mm -hmm. back the original version of it in nine, I was trying to create a sample that went across tvOS, macOS, and iOS. And even inside Apple's ecosystem, core graphics was radically different across those platforms, and I really couldn't share that code. Yeah. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if you could create an editor where you edit this stuff and then you select and it writes the proper format? So as I got started with Skia Sharp, 
and got into it. And I was actually writing this tool as just a sample. This thing is a sample that took off and developed a life of its own. Uh, it's the best kind of sample. <laughs> yeah, I realized I could actually do this and do it even better than what I had planned. Mm. So what this allowed me to do is so much of that editor is actually in the back end. Got it. Just the front of the editor is just the interface that sits on top of it. So, so much of the drawing and actually the manipulation of the canvas is in the shared back end, oh, which cool. was just a fabulous tool. That's awesome. So, and so is the idea then that the designer then exports your code for you? And it's just like a kind of a vector drawing type application. Isn't it made, is it made with Xamarin? Like how, how did it actually all come about? Here's a great one. It's made with Visual Studio.Mac. I designed oh. it completely in the brand new Visual Studio.Mac. It is made in Xamarin. It has two pieces, a library called Kimono Core that sits on top of Skia Sharp. That, that's the back end I was talking about. Got it. So you have two possibilities. You can either export the code or you can p export the project file, include the Kimono library, and then load that file and manipulate it inside your applications that are consuming it. Very cool, very cool. So I can come into the Kimono uh, designer, draw some stuff like smiley faces and drag and drop, all my vector stuff. And does it handle, all, the, the Skia Sharp is the library is gonna handle all the scaling and density and all that jazz. So I don't have to, as a developer, here's a circle, it just takes it from there. Right, and it actually renders it at the resolution of the device. So you don't have to worry about all of the resolution changes and the scaling changes. And especially if you're doing something very complex like a Boolean operation. Yeah. Uh, like taking a shape and cutting a hole out of another shape. Skia just makes that so simple. I love it. And it really does just work across the platforms. And natively, like you were saying, like this isn't, it's actually doing the core native drawing code on each platform then. Correct. Cool. So it it normalizes it across the platforms. I love it. All right. So do you want to show it too? So you want to jump in? Like where would people get started with Skia Sharp and the Kimono Designer? Let's hop over to the desktop. Okay. So what I'm going to do is share my screen. Okay. So what you can do is you can go to GitHub. It's going to be GitHub Xamarin Kimono Designer. You download the project from here. Open it in Visual Studio, which I'm going to go ahead and go over. Just give it a run. So, so people are downloading the entire actual designer, the Kimono designer, so you can see how this was built with Xamarin Mac, essentially. Yes, That's crazy. Totally. That's awesome. And I'm going to just switch back over to Visual Studio for a second and show you that we have libraries for Windows, tvOS, macOS, iOS, Forms, and Android. Oh, cool. Even All Xamarin Forms, so cross-platform UI and cross-platform um, vector drawing then. Exactly. Oh, amazing. So let me go back to the designer, and let's just show you how it works real quickly. I can pull in a circle. And if you'll notice, it's writing the code right underneath me Whoa. as I start manipulating this. So if I come in and let's add some style, let's just do a color. We're going to do something really simple first. We'll just make that pink. And you can add features such as uh, jittering effect, which is really nifty. A deviation, <laughs> distort that circle. And let's turn the frame off. But you've got some other really cool tools here. Let's go ahead and just delete this one. Go over here and delete it. Let's go back to a circle again. So let's drop a circle in. Let's do something a little bit more complex. Let's put this star right in the simple. We're going to select these and group them. With these grouped, I can start a U Boolean operation. And if I say intersection, eh, that's not the one I want. It's reverse difference. No, difference. There's what I'm going to do. Put a hole in the center of this guy. And if you'll notice, it's still very editable. If I double click it, I can actually center that up now. So mm. I'm done editing, come back. But here's where it really gets interesting. When you start adding 
uh, styles. So let's create a new style here. And let's add a gradient. And let's go ahead and edit this gradient. And let's put a color in. Oh, come on. So that, and let's get this out of the way. Add another one. Oh, cool. Yeah, because this looks like this looks like a lot of design tools that I've seen. So I'm familiar with gradients. I'm, I'm familiar with intersections and things like that. So and it's all like using the native controls, which I really love. So okay, so so can a can a controller you create a style? Can it control of multiple styles? Is that what's happening here? Yes. So what I can do is have multiple styles. So let's take this one style and let's attach this gradient to the field that we just created. And if I take this group now, I can attach that style to it. Immediately, oh, cool. there it is. And if I change the style, for example, if I make the frame a little thicker and I mm. apply a new color to it, immediately you get that style. Very cool. And if I went back to the group, I could change to a different style. Nice. Very cool. So you could have, like, you might have a, let's say this is a badge that you're giving, you have like, gold badge, bronze badge, and then you have like super deluxe badge or whatever, right? Like uh, that you would, you yep. would essentially style out. Very cool. Exactly. And then the other one you can do is you can put multiple sketches within a single project. So mm -hmm. I can come here and let's add some sides to this guy. And if you'll notice, I can edit both of these. Oh, cool. At any time. And what's really great is when I select the portfolio, if I look at the code that's being written down here, both of those projects exist inside that same portfolio. Oh, wow. Cool. And I see there's so, Mac OS selected, there's C Sharp and the Ski Sharp. What are those options up there? OK, so right now C Sharp is the only piece. OB Script we'll get to in just a second. OK. So you have Mac OS cross-platform, oh, cool. which is going to create your Windows form. I mean, uh, Xamarin, Xamarin forms. forms. Yeah, tvOS, iOS, Windows WPF. So if you notice, it just changed it. Oh, cool. Automatically. Let's go back to Mac OS, and I'll show you. If I wanted to use that core library, there it is. So oh, if cool. you notice, it decreased the amount of code. Got it. So it's kind of like the Kimono core it sits on top of Skia Sharp, and it... Um... And it will essentially simplify the code for you, like you have here. And then, does the Kimono Core also work in the um, uh, Xamarin Forms cross-platform? Yep, right oh, there. Wow. It is. So that's nice. So it's so, kind of like if you already know Skia Sharp, this is the perfect designer for Skia Sharp. But if you're brand new, you can kind of take a look at the Kimono Core, which is even even like sits on top and simplifies the uh, Skia Sharp even further down. Right. And then the other one you could do, too, is if you just wanted this one shape, if I click on just that shape, there's just the code to make that shape. Oh, cool. And you can do that with any shape. So if I just put a rectangle in, there's the rectangles code. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And you notice if I edit this, it is going to make that code change directly. Immediately. That's super cool. Yeah. Awesome. So then, is it essentially here, if you have the code and you're ready to go, is it just as simple as you said, just kind of copying that code, or is there an export to it, or, or what's the next okay. steps? Again, you've got two ways. I could just copy and paste, or I could click the export button and save this out as a, let's just go to public, and say, That. Go to my file. And oops, it's trying to open it the wrong project. <laughs> anyway. So boom, you got your CS file and then yeah, you can yeah. Right. So let's just open this and text edit right now. There's your CS file. Oh cool. Very nice. 
So let me show you one of the other more powerful features. So I'm going to open something that I already did. It's called toggle switch. So there's the little switch control. And if you'll notice, if I come to this property and set it to true. Oh, cool. So there's a scripting language built into this called OBScript. Mm. It's built off of JavaScript. And so things like the switch position, there's the code for it. And you're just getting this Boolean valid and creating the rectangle. So if I look at that thumb, you can see that it's attached right here. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. And then so like the well background is just taking this gradient that's defined and exporting it into the well under its style for fill gradient. Got it. So you can essentially attach properties to any of the the styles and the and the and the, the anything you're drawing inside of it, and then control that pragmatically. So you could you could create an entire custom toolkit for your application. Correct, and that was what this was designed for. Oh wow, crazy, crazy! And That's so, so cool. Have, the other one you can do is put a scripting library in. And if I define that library, I can use the components across the OB scripts. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, it gives you a lot of power. So the OB scripts, can you import that into a Xamarin application then? Or is that a separate NuGet package that, that lives inside of the project? The way you have to use it right now is to use the scripts and have them be live. OK. If I just export this right now, it's going to flatten the state of the script. Got it. But to keep them live, if you switch to Kimono Core and include the core library in your project, then the scripts stay live as well. Got it. That makes sense. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Awesome. So that's kind of the designer in a nutshell. <laughs> and it's completely open source, so people can fork it, they can take a look at the source code, uh, they can contribute, I assume that since it's all open source, they can contribute to it, give feedback on it, um, and let them know how you're using it essentially, right? Yes, that's exactly what we were wanting to do. Very cool. So now this, these what we're building now, what I love about this is that you are designing this drag and drop interface, building out your custom controls, your vector graphics, they could be complex like this is here with custom states, something simple like a circle or cutouts, which is actually pretty complex to do in code as you can see, right? Um, you put it in a Xamarin application and boom, cross-platform apps, cross-platform drawing, but everything like you said is drawing natively at the end of the day. Right, so if I come over here, lose my changes to this, and come back, let's take this test Mac, and let's run this item. This is going to be using, oh, where'd it go? It's still compiling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if I hit test one, that is code that came directly from the Skia project. Got it. So if I open this guy up, and it was a view controller right here. So I'm just drawing that, and this code was imported directly from Kimono. Very cool. So essentially, yeah, it's like it's like it look it may look even like a lot of code, but it's all generated for you. So you'd probably create like a custom class, be like, all right, new up this new circle, and then boom, there it is. That's probably so. The for best. example, yeah, yeah, right here's a class. Got it. And it was just export and import and away you go. Awesome. That's so cool. And then so so as Skia Sharp is evolving, is the kimono designer then evolving at the same time and then always kind of keeping up to date with the kimono core library? How how's that collaboration work? Definitely. That's what we're trying to do. Very cool. Awesome. Well is there anything else you kind of want to show at all in the designer or are now we essentially is the call to action go try out Skia Sharp, go try out the Kimono Dragon? Uh, the kimono dragon, the kimono designer. 
<laughs> totally. And that would totally be it. Awesome. Awesome. This is fantastic. I love it. This is like, I, I got to see, I remember the initial blog post we did about it and I was like, I need to see it in action. I need to see it going. And I was like blown away. So um, I, I appreciate you coming on onto the show to show it off. Hey, no problem. It was fun to do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. I really appreciate your time. Everyone, check out the show notes below for everything for the Kimono Designer, for Skia Sharp, how to get it and pull it into your application and share it with us as well. Let us know what you're building or what you're designing. We'd love to see it. I know Kevin would geek out on that too. I know I, I do. And they, totally. Uh, yeah, let us know. Let us show. Until next time, I'm James Montemagno, and this has been The Xamarin Show. <laughs>